So this here is a Hewlett Packard 333A distortion analyzer. Very similar to the 334, uh, but uh, it did its last job. I used it to a uh, to measure the distortion of the last stereo that I did. It was a Yamaha receiver, and it did a great job. And then I got a new distortion analyzer right over here. I got a uh, Tektronics DA4084. And uh, I wanted to compare the two of them. And when I turned on the 333, it uh, wasn't working correctly. It suddenly stopped and uh, it wouldn't even measure RMS voltage. And uh, if this distortion analyzer will not measure RMS voltage, it, it also will not measure distortion. It just isn't working when that's the case. And so uh, I uh, came in and I did a little bit of troubleshooting on this board under here to see if the signal was getting through. And in the process of doing that, I realized that uh, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't getting through there. And then I took some voltage measurements on this board to try and see what was going on and found out that uh, the voltage on the board was incorrect and of course at that point in time uh, the entire troubleshooting procedure changed because at that point uh, the realization that you come to is that you've got a bad power supply your power supply isn't working right uh, that power supply board plugs into this connector back here and uh, this connector you can see the purple wires up here there's three of them and there's three red wires down here and those are the positive and the negative power supplies it's supposed to be positive 25 volts and negative 25 volts ground is right here in the middle and I was measuring 7 volts and so that was not helpful uh, that's the reason why this thing isn't working right is because I don't have uh, the proper voltages on the positive and the negative rails. So at that point I I pulled out the power supply board here and I started troubleshooting the power supply board and what this video is going to be about is uh, what I found and then we'll find out if it fixes it or not but I'm going to go through a little bit of the procedure with you so that we can uh, take a look and see what uh, what kind of things that we're looking at here so the first thing is is that there's a nice schematic of this power supply and uh, this schematic is uh, a real good schematic it's e easily readable and I went in and I measured the voltages here coming off of the bridge rectifier and there was plenty of voltage there positive and negative so then I went and I I thought well maybe what I've got because at that point we come down to the pass the pass regulators here and uh, these two pass regulators are pretty heavy-duty transistors and uh, you can see that they've got big old heat sinks on them these are the pass pass elements here and uh, I took those out and they look good uh, then I started thinking well this control transistor maybe this isn't doing its job so I pulled that transistor out as well that's a Q3 it's right here and I took a look at it and it looked good now well, at that point I started thinking well maybe it's resistors or capacitors here and I started pulling resistors uh, or capacitors up and measuring them on this side and uh, the other thing I thought about was this Zener diode here that's supposed to be 7.2 volts. So I took a look at that, and in a second here we'll take a look at how I, how I looked at that, and then we'll take a look at how it is that I found the bad component. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is the Zener diode right here. I've pulled one side of that Zener diode, and I've hooked it up to my component characteristic 
uh, gives a signature of the component and there you're looking at the signature right there and as we move the scener into its breakdown region you can see the knee of the curve right there we back all the way up to the top of the knee and we get about 7.5 volts right in between 7.1 and 7.5 volts coming out of the sample and hold circuit on this thing up here and uh, this is supposed to be a 7.2 volt zener and that's plenty good enough so now we'll uh, go on and take a look at what the next uh, troubleshooting uh, steps were okay so here's what happened next what happened next was I was measuring resistors and uh, I got to this uh, resistor number 15 right here and uh, taking a look on the schematic diagram resistor 15 should be a 5100 ohm right here now when I measured it it measured 68 ohms solid so I started taking a look to see what else could be in parallel with that and uh, actually the only thing that's in parallel with it is this capacitor right here so uh, first thing I did was I lifted one leg of this resistor and then I measured it again and when I measured it the second time it came out to 5100 ohms like it's supposed to be and that got me to thinking about this capacitor here so what I did was I unhooked one end of that capacitor and I hooked it up to my uh, signal uh, my my component characteristic tracer and you can see there that that's a slanted line and usually a slanted line denotes a resistor and typically a capacitor will make an oval so I'm I've got the leads on the capacitor right now this is a 10 25 volt capacitor and now over here I've got some 10 50 volt capacitors and I'm going to take the the uh, signal tracer the component characteristic tracer and I'm going to hook it up to that capacitor and that's what we have there so you see this nice oval which is what you should see and what that's telling you basically is that this capacitor has gone from being a capacitor to a resistor and a resistor with a fairly <laughs> fairly low resistance and so uh, to confirm this what I did was I, I have a little tester here but I can also put on capacitors and uh, I took that little tester and I hooked it up to that capacitor just a second here and let me get the right lead there we go we're hooked up to that capacitor now I'm gonna hit this and it's gonna test and you can see that this tester has identified this capacitor as a 1.82 ohm resistor and that is not a good thing so that's about uh, at least three different ways that I've determined that this capacitor is no longer a capacitor now I want to show you with this little tester what happens if I hook up to a good 10 microfarad capacitor and uh, just take me a second here there we go there you go it says it's 10.56 microfarads with an ESR of 0.16 ohms so we've got a bad capacitor here so what we're gonna do is replace this capacitor and solder everything that we've undone back in and try this power supply again and see if we get the positive and negative 25 volts out of it that we want
Now that we've got the capacitor out of the circuit, there's one last test that we can run on it. We have this capacitor checker up here. It's a good old-fashioned one. And uh, this capacitor tests for leakage. And we'll run this thing up to 25 volts and see if that green eye stays open. Oh, look at that. At 25 volts, that eye goes all the way closed, and that means that that is a shorted capacitor. So, that's the final test. There's just no doubt about it. That's a bad capacitor. And uh, hopefully that will fix the power supply problem. Okay, we've installed the new capacitor. And it's uh, right here. One of the things that you have to kind of be careful of here, this board has traces that run on top of the board. And these uh, older style capacitors, they went over the top of those traces. And on these newer <laughs> style capacitors, especially because these are not axial lead, uh, excuse me, yeah, they aren't axial leads, they're radial lead capacitors. So I had to put a piece of heat shrink on here because I didn't want the leads running into the circuit trace that runs in between these two capacitors right here. So uh, just kind of be careful of that. Uh, you don't want something shorting out on that board. So I guess that all, all that's left is to put it in and give it a try. Okay, so we've got the power supply board back seated in here nice and tight. So uh, we'll plug up the mains and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so we're all hooked up here. And uh, on the positive and the negative rail with our grounds on the chassis here. And there's a variac over here. I'm going to get ready to turn that up and we'll watch the voltmeters and see what happens here. So far things are looking better. We had 7 volts before. Now we're moving on up and let's just go up to 120 volts. And here we've got a nice positive and negative 25 volts. And so I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, the good Lord didn't let the smoke out of the unit. And I'm very pleased about that. So uh, there we go. I think that... Uh, we can move on to testing the RMS voltage ranges on this and uh, see how it fares. So I don't know what kind of parallax you guys have, but here I've got this uh, signal generator set to uh, 0.1 volts RMS at a thousand hertz. Exactly. And boy, that needle is dead on. So the... Uh, AC voltmeter portion of this seems to be working real well. Now let's go up to 3 volts. Now 3 volts will show on the 3 volt scale. And let me uh, put that in here. And there we are exactly at 3. So boy, this, this voltmeter uh, in this thing, this RMS voltmeter is dead on. Now, uh, let me try 0.5 volts and we'll go down to the 1 volt scale. And there we are on the 1 volt scale. It's reading just barely shy of 0.5 volts. Well, boy, I, I think I'm going to, I think I'll take it. Let me try 0.8. Yeah, it's dead on. Boy, oh boy. Let me try 0.2. Yeah, again, right straight on. So that's looking real good. So we'll come back here in a minute and make a distortion measurement and see how good that is. So I've got my Heathkit uh, signal generator on. That's been it's been modified quite a bit. Um, and here we're over on the Tektronix. We're getting about 
0.02 uh, percent distortion and here on the Hewlett Packard the needles jumping around a little bit but it's about 0.02 022 0.021 depending on where you catch that needle it's jumping a tiny bit but to be fair the Tektronix is jumping a little bit too so uh not quite jumping that far but o overall I'm not I'm not disappointed in that that's uh, still a pretty good reading not bad at all close enough for government work now of course this one uh, is doing government work right now so uh, anyway you can see it's moving around a little bit too so this oscillator isn't uh, perfectly stable and uh, boy I learned another valuable lesson uh, don't try and make any distortion measurements when the lid is off of this that metal lid has to be on for this to uh, be working uh, correctly so but anyway there you have it that's uh, set in automatic mode and uh, it's it's hovering around 0.02 so not too bad at all I mean I'm uh, I'm more than pleased with that I can live with it so anyway that concludes the power supply repair on this thing there's probably more work that could be done to this unit a lot more uh, it's getting to the age where it really needs some recapping and that's probably the reason for that needle jumping around like that um, it would probably be best to go through this thing and just uh, replace certain capacitors but uh, the value of this unit isn't such that it, it warrants that I guess if it goes all the way haywire again I'll probably do something about it so that concludes the Hewlett Packard 333A distortion analyzer power supply repair and uh, not a bad unit for as old as it is still coming in at 0 0.02 while this one comes in at between 0 0.02 and 0 0.0195 or right in that neighborhood it's it's bounced a bit all over the place too which I'm sure has to do with that Heathkit uh, signal generator uh, one of these days I'll take that apart and do some more work on it and see just how far we can get that down <laughs>